Good afternoon and welcome to a special NASA Science Update from Washington, D.C. We're here today broadcasting from the Smithsonian's Folk Life Festival on the National Mall. My name is Steve Cole and I'm with the Office of Public Affairs here in Washington. And I'll be moderating today's press briefing on the Mars Phoenix Lander mission. We're broadcasting today from NASA's exhibit at the Folk Life Festival. NASA is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. As many of you have seen in the news, Mars, uh, I'm sorry, NASA is continuing ex exploration of the Red Planet with a new mission, the Mars Phoenix Lander, which just arrived on the planet last month. Right now, Phoenix is at Mars, busy making first-of-a-kind measurements and beaming those back to scientists here on Earth. Today, you're going to hear from three of those scientists about the latest updates from Mars and what they mean about our understanding of our nearest uh, planetary neighbor. We'll start with brief presentations by our three panelists and then open it up to questions from the audience. So let's get started. Let me introduce our three panelists. First to my left is Ramon DePaula, Phoenix Program Executive at NASA headquarters in Washington. Next will be Bobby Fogel, Phoenix Program Scientist at NASA headquarters here in Washington. And last, Peter Smith, who is the Phoenix Principal Investigator from the University of Arizona in Tucson. All right, we're ready to begin. Ramon. First chart. Yep. Okay. We have the first chart. All right. What I wanted to start with is to give you a a little bit of an understanding about our Mars exploration program and, uh, and tell you the importance that a series of missions can come together to essentially aid uh, the future missions. So in here, in this case, uh, the first picture on your left, or on my left, uh, is the Mars Odyssey, which actually gave us the, uh, the directions and the motivation for the Phoenix mission. Uh, then also we have, for example, uh, the rovers and Mars Express from ESA, who also gave us a lot of additional information. And then uh, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which was a very, very important mission in trying to help us with our landing site. Also, Mars Odyssey is providing our relay communications. So it's very, very important as we become explorers and as we try to go uh, to other planets, you know, to learn and understand how many of those missions can work together uh, to provide us the information and provide us the aid uh, for the success of the future missions. And Phoenix is a perfect example uh, how much the existing missions, such as Odyssey, such as the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, came to provide us the exact landing site and to provide us the communications. And this is one more step in our uh, step in trying to understand uh, water and water is one of the threads of life. So the importance of this mission is that we are sitting in a large plate of ice, and we want to understand what happened in that uh, in that planet. And then uh, Bobby Fogel is, will talk a little bit about our process, and then uh, Peter, of course, will talk a lot more about the science. What an amazing spring this has been! After five years of planning and preparation, and over 400 million miles. Phoenix was launched last year and landed on Mars the day before Memorial Day. What an exciting time to be living in. Um, when I was watching the lunar landings when I was a young boy with my brother, I never thought that I'd be part of something this exciting and living through real history that's being made here. Getting to Mars is a lot of hard work and thousands and thousands and thousands of things have to go right at each step of the way. Otherwise, we don't make it there. And perhaps the most harrowing part of getting to Mars is when we actually go through entry, descent, and landing at Mars. So we have our interplanetary cruise phase. And then seven minutes before we land, we start this EDL, or entry, descent, and landing phase. Now, we're going to show you a movie. And I'm going to tell you what's going on at each point. We used to say, this is what Phoenix will be doing. But you know what? Now we can nicely say, this is what Phoenix did. So this is an animation of what Phoenix actually experienced. So let's uh, start rolling the movie. OK, so here's Phoenix uh, going through interplanetary space and beginning its, its entry, descent, and landing. Stop. 
Okay, the first thing that happens to Phoenix, it begins to hit the uh, outer atmosphere of Mars and it begins to heat up. This is the same sort of process that happened with the Apollo astronauts on entry back to the Earth and what happens to the shuttle when it comes uh, back to Earth, and that is the friction of the atmosphere against the spacecraft heats it up. And we have a corking on the back of Phoenix, which is a heat shield, which absorbs the heat being generated here. And the heat generated here goes up to about 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. So many times that which you, you find in your, uh, in your oven when you cook your food. The speed that Phoenix is going uh, at this point is 13,000 miles per hour. At that speed, if you uh, tried to go from here to Washington, it would take you 15 minutes. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so Phoenix is now absorbing uh, lots of the energy that's being created, and it's slowing down. Stop. At this point, we're about to open up our, uh, our parachute, and Phoenix is slowed down to about uh, 1,100 miles per hour. Okay, continue. And there you can see the parachute that's been deployed, and it's slowing Phoenix down the way a normal parachute here on Earth does. Stop. What you just saw before was the heat shield, which is jettisoned, and now the foot pads of Phoenix have, have been uh, uh, initiated. Continue, please. And now the, the lander has been, is in free fall, and it turns on its retro rockets ready to land. And there you go, Phoenix lands on Mars. Now, this is spun ahead quickly for us, but we actually have a latency period here where we do nothing for about 20 minutes to let all the dust settle. And what you're seeing here is the solar arrays of Phoenix opening up 20 minutes after we land. And that's the panoramic, panoramic camera that, that we have. And the pole that just came up is our weather station. And you're about to see the robotic arm, one of the stars of Phoenix, getting ready to do some of its work. The robotic arm is encased in uh, a biobarrier, which allows it to be really clean in case we find uh, organics. And now you'll see uh, how the robotic arm actually scoops some of the soil on Phoenix, brings it into the scoop, moves it up, and goes to the deck. And there's an instrument over here. This is the TIGA instrument, where in this simulation, the soil is being placed into one of the ovens of TIGA for analysis. And what you have here is our LIDAR instrument, which actually probes the skies and can give us profiles of what the atmosphere and the dust in the atmosphere look like. Next slide. Okay, but uh, Ramon spoke a little bit about how all the parts of the Mars Exploration Program work together. We actually deploy, we send out orbiters to do science on the entire globe of Mars. And these orbiters help us understand where we should be going for landers and rovers to actually study up close and personal what the rocks and the soil and the ice on the surface might look, uh, uh, actually look like. And this photo that you see here is really emblematic of how all the different pieces of the Mars program work together. This photo was taken by the uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, one of our newest orbiters around Mars. And we asked this orbiter to take a picture of Phoenix while it's landing. And so at this point, the picture that we trapped over here is a phoenix with its, uh, um, with its parachute deployed. You see the small little box uh, over on uh, your left. Uh, and when you blow up that box to the lower left, you can actually see, this is actual data, this is not a simulation, a picture of phoenix during its descent. Now the crater that you see is a crater not far away from where Phoenix actually landed to the west of this. For a matter of scale, this crater is 10 kilometers wide. Next photo. Well, we actually asked the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to give us an image of exactly where Phoenix landed so we know exactly the position on the planet that Phoenix is studying. And this is one of those high-rise uh, photos. In the upper uh, center, there's a little blue dot. And over to your left, you